just want to know how, uh, I mean, I can assume that not everybody over here is very, very familiar to the technique of animation. So uh, I thought, I mean, usually my master classes are pretty uh, much about the technique of animation, but I thought it would be too complex because here we have an audience which uh, need not have animators as such in here. So how I arranged the thing was, uh, I thought I would, would like to take you through how I uh, deal with the film part of the animation, which is the story, the characters, the um, a bit of the animation, and then the, the post-production. So just one, um, and one of the things which I thought was, I, I recently finished uh, uh, making a film called True Love Story, which is of course a short animation film. And um, I was thinking I would um, detail my talk over that film. Okay, so then how I'll uh, do it is I'll have a, maybe just a 25 or 30 minute uh, talk and explaining the things and then uh, we can watch the film and have a Q&A after the film so that it's more interactive and uh, I mean yeah it would be better for me also to answer questions and uh, keep it more. So um, okay uh, there's a bit of a technical uh, issue so the thing is I will be standing over here I'll be sitting next to the laptop and uh, uh, talking and showing you things uh, I mean my process of animation so I hope that's fine for everybody. And most of the time, we'll need to have the lights off. Uh, would that uh, worry you? I mean, it's fine for you because I'll talk and uh, show the images. So most of the, I mean, I prefer people look at the images than my face. Uh, have the lights off. Uh, and yeah, so I'll begin. Just as a brief history to uh, the way I approach my work, um, one of the things which as an animator I have been very interested in in terms of a visual look to my film because visual is more uh, the visual leads my film uh, in animation, has been to try and uh, get Indian elements or the things which influence me a lot which is uh, Indian art into my animation films. So it, my journey actually began with one uh, work which I had done many, many years back, and I'll just take you through it. Uh, this was an illustration work which I had done many years back. But through it, I ended up studying a lot of Indian folk art uh, traditions in various parts of India, which unfortunately, in spite of being from an art school, I wasn't really taught formally. So what I did was I was studying these various art forms, here, I studied them as stills, but as I proceeded in my animation films, I took a few of these art styles and uh, decided to take them into animation. So just a glimpse of some of the styles that I worked on was telling a story in a single page using the leather puppets of Karnataka. I mean, leather puppetry is a very ancient art in India, but it's fast disappearing and Indonesia is probably the only place which still has performances. But these are, uh, this was an, a very ancient uh, form of art which um, is done by making leather puppets, holding them against a screen with a light or a fire torch behind, and the shadows <coughs> play out the, the, uh, the stories. So this is something I have taken forward in one of my other films, and I will proceed to show you how I went on to animate this time. So this was uh, leather puppetry, then there was I'm new to the computer, so please bear with my. Uh, if I scroll to, need to scroll to the next. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Back. Oh, these two. Okay. So this was uh, something I was uh, working on Madhubani paintings, and I won't spend too much time on it. But it's actually telling the story of a girl and a boy. Um, the difference parents meet out to girls and boys in a story uh, set in Madhya Pradesh. This was done for UNICEF uh, in the year of the girl child. So they are all stories about girls in different parts of India. And the art style belongs to the place where the girls come from. So this was Mithila. And then this was uh, Bombay, of course, which I, I feel the street art of Bombay or the south of India is, is, is almost like a folk art. It signifies, um, this is actually more south India than Bombay. 
and this was uh, Katputlis, which also I thought are extremely animatable. And here again, in a still, that they're, they're trying to tell us the, the story of a Rajasthani girl. Then this is uh, an art style in uh, again from Madhya Pradesh, where they paint on the wall uh, using clay, uh, uh, clay and plaster, and then it is sculpted as a relief, and then painted upon. And this is Kaligat from uh, West Bengal. Patachitra from uh, Orissa, miniature painting styles, which again was something I took look I took forward to and animated in uh, a lot of my films. This was batik, uh, yeah, textiles also is for me a, a, a huge inspiration as a visual for animation. And this was uh, a sum up, sum up, summing up of all the art styles and the quilt making industry of uh, the north of India. So this was something which I did many, many years back. It got me interested in the art forms, which I then proceeded to. Uh, animate in a film called uh, Get Get, which is supposed to be a feature film. We uh, worked for about six months and made about eight and a half minutes of animation. And after that, the finances ran out. So we could never complete the film. How many people work for six months? Twelve people. And it was a, uh, my style of animation is very personal. I paint frame by frame. But uh, what was interesting in this project was I had, uh, I had to train 12 animators to do, to work like uh, in the style that I did. I thought it would be impossible, but I was very surprised because uh, we have a wonderful uh, talent in India for drawing 2D animation, not as great as what we have. Uh, yes, you on the computer. <laughs> not grids. Like you, are, you paint only the no, movements? No, no. Or we paint every frame. Everything? Yeah. Each for each movement? Yes. 2D animation is uh, yeah, always painted frame by frame unless it's vector. Yeah, but it is zinc also, no? They cut and... No, that's 3D. In 2D, uh, handmade. Uh, cutouts. Cutouts. Yeah. Cutouts, yeah. That's cutouts, not... Uh, yeah, 2D animation. I mean, that's why I say, I say what I do is frame by frame painted 2D animation. So, um, Girgit was a film um, about a story about three uh, people, three uh, three youths, a boy from Kashmir, a migrant from Kashmir, a girl from Madhya Pradesh, and a little boy from Karnataka. The three of whom meet in Bombay, and it was a survival story about why they come to Bombay, how they managed to survive in Bombay, and what their life was back home. So, uh, I chose. The, I mean. Being from Bombay, I, one of the things I've, uh, that interests me a lot is the people who migrate to Bombay, just about everybody does. But the ones who's, who don't really come to join Bollywood or no success stories, they, they come and they are actually uh, sleeping on the streets but making the buildings or selling things. So they're actually a huge migrant population which is creating the city but never finds a space to live within it. So they were the characters of my story. And um, the boy is like 17 year old from Kashmir, the girl is about 18, 19 year old from Madhya Pradesh and the littlest boy is uh, a 10 year old from Karnataka. So I chose to tell their stories in the past, the places that they came from, in the art style that belonged to that place. So Madhya Pradesh, I kind of cheated between Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and have the miniature art uh, which I have followed. Kashmir. As you will see uh, once I show you, it's the truck, the paintings on the Kashmiri trucks, which was my inspiration. And Karnataka was leather puppets. The story of the three characters was that the little boy's family uh, was into leather puppetry. And for some reason, I mean, there is a good reason in the film, but it's too long to get into. Uh, their leather puppetry uh, completely fails and then the choice is only to come to a place like Bombay and do menial labor. The boy's story is that uh, he has a truck driver father and uh, mother and of course it's in Kashmir and his parents are killed uh, by the army and so, and he happens to witness it. Uh, I mean they're killed by mistake in an encounter and all. So he has to run away and he comes to Bombay. And the girl from Madhya Pradesh is 
underage, then she is forced to get married to an old man because father has to pay back debts. So she runs off and comes to Bombay. So there are these three stories. I'll show you some uh, rough tests also, and then I'll show you a trailer. Which, I mean, since we never finished the film, what I did was whatever animation we managed to finish, I put together. <coughs> uh, this is the first clip, which again, the, the, this is not a final film, so it, it's uh, technically not perfect. But this is the part where of the the story of the little boy in the leather <coughs> uh, world. Uh, there is another, uh, again, a rough test. Um, which is the girl story uh, told in the miniature style.
Okay, so this uh, this was a film which I never ended up making, but uh, the character stayed with me, and uh, I worked on a few other projects, but they kept coming back to me, and I felt the stories were not uh, told. So. Two years later, I started uh, write, uh, scripting a short film uh, using the same characters, two of them, the, the, the older boy and the girl, and I decided to uh, make a love story about them in, set in Bombay. Uh, I started as a short film, but then uh, the idea grew, and <coughs> somewhere I ended up writing a feature film, which uh, was three stories of not, it, it, it was a completely different story from Girgit, but the characters were the same, and the histories were the same. And I realized this is the fascinating thing that you know, uh, people might come from wherever they are, and the histories might remain the same, but what happens to them in Bombay can be a forever evolving uh, idea, and uh, an Im imagined idea for me as a writer. So that's when I thought of, uh, I mean, the idea of a uh, true love story, uh, the short film, and then the, I mean, the feature happened to take place. So let me get on to uh, how true love stories start. I mean, that was the idea of uh, starting the film. And since I'm an animation filmmaker, I do a lot of visual scripting and a lot of storyboarding. My scripts are not really very uh, text scripts. But since we were looking for funding for the film, I had to actually write it down to a script. But storyboards are something we uh, hold more sacred than you know, scripts. Um, so, I'll show you, I mean, the beginnings of animation is usually, I mean, has been for me the characters that uh, I deal with. So, th this was taking the same characters as I had uh, in, in Girgit, but the graphic style, I was exploring a new graphic style, completely different from what I had done in Girgit to tell the uh, story. So, it started as an exploration. Which which I'm afraid you cannot see. characters and exploring a different graphic style. There was a time I considered uh, puppet animation because I was going to uh, be collaborating with the Polish Film Institute on it. That also didn't uh, kind of happen, so puppets went out and back to uh, something that I'm familiar with, which is uh, oils. And then I saw the possibility and the difficulty of uh, when you have to paint many frames, how it um, how it will look because they can have jitters. This, of course, what we f do first in animation: have a bible of your characters. My bibles, unlike most traditional bibles, are more about expressions. Like I, when I come up with a character, I need to know how they will express things. And especially in a film like this, because there was a lot of acting and expression involved, which is my preoccupation and which I feel a lot, not many people do in animation. And it's, I have a bit of an acting background, so uh, that is, well, is the reason why I like to bring a lot of acting and not use uh, words to tell stories, but a lot of expressions. So this was the girl character and then she, the story demanded that she has a little sister. This is another, I mean, this is a uh, part of the film where, which happens on screen. It's a Bollywood uh, influence on the boy. So this was the style which I came up for the Bollywood part, which is taken from the Tamil, um, 
Tamil film posters and polit political posters also. It's like contrasting colors, larger than life image. This is another <coughs> character in the feature film and in the short film. It was one of the stories. She's a Sandra from Bandra, living for many, many years in a dilapidated house which she would sell for rebuilding. They're very typical Bombay characters, so. Okay, not bad, could see few. But that gives you an idea of uh, explorations. Then of course, uh, a big part of my film was because it was set in Bombay and I really wanted to recreate Bombay in, uh, in as beautiful a way as possible. I was working with a production designer who also doubled up as my background artist, my colorist. I mean, we were, we were I had three animators and one uh, background person helping me on this. So they were doing just about everything. So this was some of the first explorations of uh, we just, uh, I decided to set the story on Juhu Beach. Uh, so two sides of Juhu Beach is where the love story unfolds. So this was the other side. Um, our, I mean, we started off and uh, it was a little Disney-ish then I, because my uh, production design is, is works on Disney and Pixar films. So if you see on the, the, the first sketch on the left, it was still a little clean and neat and all, and then finally when we came to the coloured stuff, it became as dirty as Bombay is. Ah, this is a little small, but... Uh, okay, I don't want to... <laughs> yeah, this is, this is more like a close-up of the house. Uh, which is her house on the other side of uh, Juhu. You will see this a lot more in the film, so I'm not really... Uh, uh, I mean, it's okay if you can't see it so clearly here. Okay, these are some of the color mood boards, as we uh, call them, of the various places in uh, evening time, morning time, night time, interiors, exteriors. So we had four or five locations in the film. One was uh, Garage Road in Bombay, and uh, so that's the first visual you see with the rickshaw. That's how it looks like early in the morning, actually, with the uh, uh, neon lights still flickering. Then the one opposite it is, again, a street in uh, Bombay, early morning. The one on the lower left is a dance bar where we have set one of the scenes. So it was the interior of a dance bar. And interestingly, we were all women working on this project. And apart from me, nobody had seen one. And there was no scope of seeing one anymore. So we did a little bit of uh, research from Bollywood films. You know what it is. <laughs> but then finally, the film is a take on Bollywood. So it makes sense. Then the last visual is St. Andrew's Church in Bombay. Um, again, in a very morning light. That's again the pencil sketches which eventually turn to uh, colour. So the one with the rickshaw is again the garage road and it's um, evening light. And these, these are, I mean, my uh, production designer actually paints on paper and sketches on paper. But finally in the film we painted on the machine. The one, the, the one on the right is that Juhu Tara road. Then we had no streets of Bombay and the usual Pavaji stall. All of this is like uh, parts of the film. This is again uh, how we Yeah, this is, I'm just quickly showing you some stages how we evolve. I mean, it's a, it's a long process, so uh, these are just few of the um, ways. Like we, we began with something like this and then uh, the stage in the dance bar and then what all could go into it. We found the lamps to uh, five-star hotelish, so they then changed to the lamps that would be there. We made it seem like an old space which 
had flourished at one time, but doesn't work very well anymore. So this is actually like set designing, which goes on it goes on for live action films. We do almost the same process for animation. So we stages of oh, it's quite dark. <laughs> The dancers also have to be designed. So that was yeah, one of the scenes. Then we have uh, then basically crowds is something in live action you just get it like it's there, you have to clear them. In animation you have to make them. So that's a huge job. I had one animated dedicated to uh, Crowd. crowds. <coughs> and of course, I made my life very difficult by uh, because it's a Bombay film and there is a band Baja Bharat happening. So, this entire Bharat was uh, designed and animated painstakingly. And these are of course what you're seeing is stills, then they animate. So it's like 12 frames a second, they have to be painted again and again. Finally, the scene looks like this when you put everybody together. So. using a mouse now, I'm not drunk, <laughs> this lack of coordination is, <laughs> I'm not familiar with this machine, but I know it must seem very strange, why can't you just, you know, hit the... So, and then there was another dance which, uh, at, the, at the bottom, uh, South Indian Tamil dance which happens on the beach, which is also a crowd of people, so, in the night time, so as you can see the characters are painted very differently. We al always have to paint the light on the characters before we animate them. So it's not like the, again, the feeling of lighting is created. So if you have a nighttime scene, you can never reuse it for a daytime scene. It has to be drawn again, painted again. These are all individual elements. Uh, which might seem funny to you, but that's how a scene like this is finally created. Uh, Corel Painter huh? on on the computer. We use a software called Corel Painter. Corel. Corel. Corel Painter. Corel Painter, and a bit of Photoshop, and it's uh, composited on After Effects. So. No, no hand painting, manual painting. Uh, the backgrounds are painted on paper, sketched on paper and hand, but then scanned in and recolored and touched up on the computer. Okay. Now. Uh, yeah, I made the film in various stages. Uh, in the sense, first stage was to just put up expert, uh, excerpts of the film uh, in order to find finance. So one of my first um, trailers I'll show you, the film changed and evolved quite a bit after that. But basically how I work is I, do, I take few scenes and, and I work alone. Uh, I worked alone for about one year before I, a group joined in. So I take scenes which I feel uh, which inspire me basically and which help me discover a style of the movie. And I put it to uh, existing uh, scratch sound or music uh, in order to see the feel of the, of the excerpts. So when I was putting together the, the love, uh, I mean I, I wanted this to be a love story and I wanted this, the first excerpts that I had done was mainly about these expressions of love exchange between two people. So one of my biggest inspirations is Wong Kar Wai. And Wong Kar Wai. So, uh, most of you know Wong Kar Wai. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
what I did was uh, edit my whatever I had put together, edited it to music to get a feel of you know whether the film works or not. Uh, so this is. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Classic. <huh? laughs> I hope I know. I uh, write like this. It's not this one here. Not the okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes. yes. It's also a very important exercise for me in terms of uh, the mood of my animation, the edit and the music that I put together and of course this was the inspirational part of it, then um, what I, it's more or less the same animation but with a different music and a slightly different pace. But I'd like to show it to you because this is something I love doing, um, juxtaposing certain things and yet certain things are very very clear. It's just a different music which gives a different feel and it contextualizes the film where it belongs. That's what I feel.
so that is <laughs> two sides of the same coin. <laughs> okay, uh, now I, I don't, I think it's good if we uh, start the film. It's three. <laughs> three ten, okay. So I think I'll just go on to uh, the film and then we can open it up for a Q&A depending on how much time. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asks how much, uh, what is the budget of that painting? It's very difficult <laughs> to say. Cost or budget? What was your investment? Investment was one and a half years of my time into the film. So if there was a budget and if I had got paid and everybody had got paid and the film had been made, then I could say there is a cost or there is a budget to the film. What I, friends helped me, uh, the sound design was done free of cost because Sadhguru Priya is a good friend. So if I had to pay uh, everybody, it would be about 25 lakhs, uh, not myself, the rest of the people. So Including sound design, uh, sound design uh, also, also in studio cost. Are you a producer? <laughs> <laughs> because this is a question which I cannot answer and I'm not interested in wasting time in answering. Because even if I tell you 25 lakhs, how does it help? But if I tell a financer that I need 25 lakhs to make the film, that's a different thing. So if you're a producer, yes, 50 lakhs. <laughs> <laughs> What are the screening options for like perspectives in India like? What is it? What are the screening options? Like you can't see that as PDR, right? I mean, no, if it's a short film, uh, there are no screening of platforms or options except festivals. And then uh, yeah, YouTube you don't want to put it on because it's then like you can't do it. But do you have like a commercial platform where only animators can show where people will subscribe to I've been trying that for the last eight years, I have not been able to figure this out in India, especially for animation shorts. The rest of the world, there are things like DVD compilations, which uh, have been uh, about uh, award winning uh, short films. So my early <coughs> film has been in DVD compilations, but it's like 10 films uh, in a DVD with 20% kept by the sales agent. So the, usually the money that comes to you about 10, 15 euros or pounds in a year, because okay. it's divided between, no matter how well uh, 
selling it is. So rest of the world doesn't uh, believe in commercializing short films. It's usually grants from the country, especially in animation, because the costs are so high to make it. Most of the people are making it because they have, either the country gives them grants or the school that they are uh, studying in finances it. But professionally, very few people are making uh, uh, short films. In France, at least, there is something like Arte Channel, mm -hmm. a television channel. In Japan, they have a channel which uh, has a slot for uh, shorts. Channel 4, uh, the Welsh channel has the BBC. So a lot of the European countries have their own channels for short films. And they would probably buy a film like this. Okay. So that would be the only uh, avenue. But within India, there is really none. Because television doesn't pay for films. So, like, would one of the reasons be like you must have made this? I mean, this must have taken a, like, a lot of commitment for yeah. very little, let's say, you know, commercial game. Then this becomes kind of part of your portfolio. Is for generally for animation, is is there like uh, a growing market in India? Like, are people opening up? Uh, feature films. There was a huge market which swelled, and then we kind of destroyed it because we made some really bad uh, animated feature films. After Hanuman was a success, we made things like um, Roadside Room, No, and bad in the sense they they were, did very badly in the uh, in the theaters, mm -hmm. so they couldn't recover the money. Okay. So 80 films which were signed in, like some 70 or 75 of them were uh, uh, people. I mean, the producers walked off from it. But there have been modules like Chota Boom, and uh, yes. yes, they are doing really low budget films and developing. Uh, market for themselves by uh, tapping into the kids. But those are really low budget films. They are not made uh, over such a long time in such complicated uh, uh, graphic. graphic style, which takes very long. How many things change after so many awards? Uh, financial, no. Yes. No, because, uh, see, I also make it a little difficult for myself by not uh, making films for children, by not having stars in my film, by uh, having social issues which sometimes people don't want to invest in. So I'm not the best example to be saying that uh, there is very little finance in this country. But I know people make films like this all over the world and they still do manage to find financing. Uh, you mentioned before the film in your talk that, um, that, that if there's like a group dance scene and things like that, that it's very painstaking to put that in, to include that. I mean, it takes a lot of time to animate. So, so do you have these situations where uh, you have to decide if the story needs it, and then you're saying, oh, this is going to take too much effort. And all you all have the time, to you, uh, you, have to yeah. do that. you have to do that, and that's why uh, a lot of commercial films, for lack of time or budget, they don't do crowd scenes very with a lot of interest. But then I'm not making a commercial film, and I don't have financing. So for me, it's, I, I don't compromise on it at all. If the uh, story needs it, it just has to be there. The moment I start writing a story in Bombay, I'm telling myself there's going to be crowd, there's going to be a lot of work. So it's a headache that you're seeing that's coming, and you're, but yeah. you're, you're ready to, to embrace it. Yeah, I don't like the limited animation approach, which is uh, you take a, a, a story which needs a huge animation and then you cut down on it. It's smartly used when you take a story which doesn't need too much animation and you work within the constraints knowing your limitations. People do that. People do very limited animations but extremely smartly. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, they, um, do you think there's a danger in animated film right now targeted at children only and changing the whole thing? What animation is capable of otherwise? Do you think it's like, threatening right now because most of the animation See, I, if I was actually in the race, I would find it threatening. I think it's so big and it's so much for children that I don't even find it a threat. I think that is a world. And then there is this other world which is still surviving, which is making uh, animations for, not, not just for children, all over the world. In India, it's just just about beginning, but in India, animation itself is just about beginning. It's from the 70s. So we have a very small history. We are catching up quite fast, one would say, and in just about 20-25 years, we've done pretty remarkable work. But if you see all the other countries which we look up to in animation, be it Russia, Poland, Canada, their history is from 1930s, Japan uh, also, and they have reached where they have, having, you know, such a, a wide uh, But it's strange that narratives are envisioned for children in, like, 
animation as a form is so huge like this. No, I think it's Disney and Pixar which have, you know, kind of uh, merchandised oh. it for children yeah. so much that we think it is only for children and that is what in India we are seeing all the time. In Russia also there is a huge children's animation thing. But mostly in Europe, very little is done for children. Just about 70-80% of the films are for adults. Uh, so if you compare that, that many films, uh, the, short, the amount of short films for adults that get made in animation is far more than the children's film. Mm -hmm. You take all over the That's world. That's true. But we don't see them. Yeah. We would have to go to a festival to see them. The ones that we see are the children's films. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> can I please let her because she has some. Yeah, which software do you use for the animation? Corel Painter is what I call the animation. <laughs> no, for, yeah, for frame by frame animation, Corel Painter, which is uh, Photoshop, but then I composite it on After Effects. Yeah, I think that. After Effects. Uh, okay, After Effects. And you bought the original version? No. <laughs> that <is very> <laughs> that will cost me more than the film that I made. And then you self-taught. Okay. Yeah. You self-taught as an right? Yeah. Uh, Software uh, self-teaching is quite easy. I mean, I am um, comfortable with 2D. 3D I have not yet got into. I find that quite tough. Uh, creative question. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a tragic ending to Kai guys, it seems. Uh, if, if, if it were, if were a happy ending, you would have not died and you would have survived. I'm just asking. Then it would have been a Bollywood film and I would have got money to make the film. <laughs> No, that, that's what I tried to say in the film, you know, that happy endings happen only in Bollywood. In reality, they need not. <coughs> so, I'm, I mean, I feel, yeah, uh, love stories have to have tragic endings. <laughs> yeah. Um, the music, uh, how do you, uh, especially the dance, there is this dance happening there. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, what's the, you know, how do you get the music, what's the, you know, of music, you call it music? This dance we did without a music because we were not sure uh, what piece of music will get the rights for. So we did. We usually do a, uh, a dance which is sings to sing to a beat of eight. It works for just about any music. The last part, the the button drums that I had, and I singed the animation. I kept the music in front of me and did frame by frame animation to sing into the music. But the dance was a little tricky. The the bar dance, whereas the this also uh, the Bharat dance was done on sync. The yeah, that, that music I had before and then I did the dance to it. In fact, I've used the dance which happens in the documentary which was uh, covering that music and recreated it. Okay, we have to end the session now. Thank you very much for being here. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. okay.